Code Crafters reached out to me. They have this really cool platform where you can do advanced programming projects. You follow along on their platform and it breaks it down into smaller steps. And you can actually build things like Git, Redis, SQLite, Docker in the programming language of your choice and learn more about how that stuff works. These are designed to be more advanced challenges. So this could be really good if you are more of like a senior engineer and you want to do some interview prep. I think this could be really, really great for that. It could also be great if you just want to understand understand more about how a particular software works. So today I'm going to start in the TypeScript track and I am going to try and build my own Git. So I'm going to do this challenge and see how it goes. <laughs> we'll get as far as we can here, but I'm really excited to test out this platform. This looks really great. There is going to be an affiliate link in the description. If you are interested in trying out some of these challenges and having a membership, definitely check that out. Okay, my preferred language is going to be TypeScript, and they're going to create a Git repository for me to work on. All right, they've prepared a starter repository for us, so we can go ahead and clone this. Perfect, Git push was successful. Now they also have on here, as we move through these steps, there's code examples that you can reference if you need help. There's also screencasts that can walk you through the different steps and explain a little bit more in depth what you're actually doing. So if you get stuck, you can refer to this, get some ideas, and you can actually improve your understanding about what you're doing. All right, let's open up this project. Navigate to app main.ts, uncomment the code, and then we just have to push. And that was it. We've completed the first stage. So obviously that was a super simple, just get the Git repo set up. You can kind of see how they walk you through all the different pieces. So this is all the stuff that we just completed with that first step. So we have a git init command that initializes a git repository, which is essentially just creating a dot git directory with files and directories inside of it. And then they go into a little bit of detail of kind of the bare minimum of what the dot git directory needs to contain. So you have your git objects, git references, and the head reference to the currently checked out branch. So we can go on to the next stage. Woo! <laughs> okay, we only have six sections left already. So for this next stage, we don't have any commented out code. We're going to implement our own solution. In this stage, you'll add support for reading a blob using the git cat file command. I'm a big fan of using AI to see how we can speed this up a little bit. So I'm just going to copy all of the instructions that they've given us and ask ChatGPT what's the best place to start. Uh, well, ChatGPT is actually down right now, literally as I'm trying to film this. So love that for me. And guys, do keep in mind, if that happens to you, you can always go over to the code examples section if you do need to look at a solution and you can check out how other people have solved this. And that can also give you an idea of what to get started on next if you're feeling stuck. So now when we commit, it's going to run the test that's going to initialize a new repository using our program and then insert a blob into the new git objects directory and actually run our program with this new cat file command. And it'll use the blob shj key to target the blob that we want and run it with the script. Awesome, we can see all tests passed. The steps are right here, added blob object, there's the SHA, then it's running the cat command using that key, and it printed out the contents of that blob, vanilla, donkey, doobie doobie, yikes, monkey. <laughs> now we can mark this stage as complete. All right, now we can read a blob object in our little mini git, so we need to figure out how to create a blob object. So we need to implement support for git hash object command. So this is the command that the little scripty script will run to compute the SHA hash of the file. And then that will be written to our .git slash objects directory. So just using our, our little old noggin here, we can kind of deduce that what we're probably gonna be doing is adding another section, another case to the switch case, for the hash object command. Definitely gonna need to throw that in our commands enum. And then let's create a switch case for commands.hash object. So we definitely know that we're gonna need to be able to hash the file path, which definitely means we're gonna need some function to be able to do that. I'm just gonna create a hash object function underneath this. And it's definitely gonna be taking in our file path. Now, usually in order to do hashing, I use a crypto library for that. So I think it's safe to say that we should probably install that. Whew, all right, y'all, this has not been an easy journey, I can tell you that. First, we gotta check that the W flag is provided and that the file path is specified. Then we're calling our hash object function with the file path, which reads the file contents, creates a header, 
compresses it, and then finally it's printing the output for us. Let's see if with all of these pieces, if our tests are gonna pass. Oh, I see we're not supposed to update. There's frozen lock file for this repo. Okay, y'all, I had gotten myself into a pickle there because I'm really good at breaking things, but I had to just revert my package.json file back to uh, the initial commit, just using a git log and then git checkout at this commit hash. So don't npm install things because um, um, turns out they give you this repo pre-installed with everything that you're gonna need, so don't do what I did. <laughs> but the good news is all of our tests pass. We can mark the blob object creation step as complete and go to the next step. Here we need to implement the git ls tree command, which is used to inspect a tree object. This is great because already I feel like I'm learning so much more about how git works under the hood than what I've ever really given much thought to before, so that's really great. So the trees are how the directory structures are stored. Each tree object has multiple entries, the SHA hash the point to the blob, name of the file, mode of the file, which is a simplified version of the permissions you'd see in a Unix file system. Interesting. So if you had a project directory like this, then the entries in the tree object would look like this. Okay, so basically all we need to do is create a command that's gonna output the uh, tree structure of our directories for us. Whew, man, y'all, this is tough. We're gonna have to think through like subarrays and all kinds of stuff. These challenges are not for the weak. All right, I'm gonna have to work on this for a bit, do some thinking. It might be time to look for the solution. It might be time to take a peek. Yes, show me the code. I need help. <laughs> We really might have to call it on this one. <laughs> I made it to the next step. I can see that only 10 people have even attempted this next step and it looks like only like two or three people have even found a uh, a passing solution for the next part. I think I might have unknowingly picked one of the hardest challenges on here, but look what we had to do here in the last step. We had to introduce this huge new function to get the tree object's data. So it's basically reading and decompressing the object file using the SHA1 hash. So it's parsing the object's header to determine its type and size. If it's a tree, it's gonna process all the entries, extract the mode name SHA1 for each entry, convert that to a hexadecimal format, create an array of tree objects representing all the files and directories in the tree, and then returning an object that contains the type, size, file content for the tree. I mean, this is a lot of parsing logic, but look how far we got. Like in our project, we have our own git directory where we can create and store blob objects, read them, and parse the contents of our compressed files in the file tree. And I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good about that, and I feel like I learned a lot just from what I've done in this challenge so far. I'll push this code so y'all can take a look if you're interested, but but if you do decide to sign up for Code Crafters, try this challenge. Tell me if it also completely blew your mind and felt like the hardest thing in the world and made you question everything about being a developer. And maybe you'll make it to the end and, and let me know what happens. We could definitely keep going here, but I have a feeling that this would take me a pretty long time to get through all of this. This is definitely not a challenge for the week. Thanks to Code Crafters for reaching out. I'm definitely gonna be checking out more of these challenges. I think this can really help improve my development skills. It's nice to have some of these more advanced programming challenges that are a little bit more project-based rather than just like solving leak code problems and stuff like that. So if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, check out the Code Crafters link down below, and I'll see you in the next one really soon.